So, uh, so today I'm going to uh, talk to you about uh, how to empower your Alzheimer's disease research by leveraging the uh, uh, resource in uh, DMS core. Uh, DMS stands for uh, Data Management and Statistical Core, specifically for uh, early career investigators. Uh, okay. So uh, let me give a very brief uh, introduction about this uh, data management and statistical core and what uh, what we are doing. Uh, so um, there are major three components here. So um, the first component is about statistical consultation. So uh, mainly it will be uh, provided by uh, myself and my team. So uh, we will provide uh, statistical expertise, consultation, uh, collaboration for data analysis, statistical design, power calculation, uh, sampling, uh, predictive models, and so on. So, but the keyword here is that it has to be related to AD and ADRD. So, um, so we can uh, help you with your grant, existing or funding grants or proposals or projects or papers, anything related to uh, AD and ADRD just is to fall into this category. So, um, the second uh, major component is the bioinformatic piece. So uh, mainly this piece will be provided by uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Uh, Mike Lutz, so uh, his team. So uh, he will provide a, a consultation in uh, bioinformatic, uh, um, big data, uh, genomic, transcriptomic, proteomic, metabolomic, imaging, and so on. So um, if you're not sure who to contact, so you can contact both of us. Um, Another piece is about uh, data management. So uh, mainly we'll provide uh, the coordinated and uh, integrated data management capability and uh, also share the data with the uh, NAC, which is the central database. Uh, every ADRC should upload the data to this uh, central NAC repository. And also uh, we are also uh, going to share our data to other uh, AD related uh, collaborative effort. So now today I'm going to focus mainly on the first piece, which is the statistical consultation. Uh, what I want to say is that this piece does make a big difference. Now, since this uh, ADRC is onset in um, uh, September of uh, 2021, so we have uh, five ongoing grant funded. So, uh, well, I can say after the statistical consultation. So some with the more involvement from our team and some with less. Uh, there's one more pending. So um, anyway, so uh, here is the list. Um, so four of us are our one grant, um, or a million dollar or three, two, three million dollar at least grants. Uh, the second one, uh, R56 uh, is also uh, we submit it as our one proposal, as you know. Um, you know, even you get a borderline score. So, uh, especially in uh, NIA, National Institute on Aging, so they give you this the R fifty six, which is the uh, like a transitional grant, um, so that you can use that. Uh, this is usually one year, one to two years, so you can use that uh, grant to get some preliminary data. So that um, the idea is to help you uh, transition into a uh, uh, our one grants. Um, so, right, so now I think uh, specifically I want to mention number four. So this one is very surprising. Uh, actually, is the first uh, occurrence in my uh, whole career. So uh, we got impact score of 13 at 1%. So, <laughs> and uh, surprisingly, uh, the budget was not cut at all. So everything we asked for was paid for actually. So um, another uh, pattern you might notice is that all these the, uh, principal investigators are from Duke. So um, we really hope that we can get more requests from non-Duke uh, researcher. Uh, so that's why uh, I think um, hopefully you guys will uh, uh, take advantage of this uh, uh, valuable resource. So uh, there's one more uh, to be funded. Uh, by uh, Dr. Ghosting, also from Duke. So it's also another five-year grant. Uh, 
also we uh, submitted multiple proposals recently. So um, uh, the first one is uh, a joint submission with uh, uh, UNC uh, colleagues um, about statistical learning method. Uh, the second one also is a uh, uh, joint submission with uh, 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 Dr. Abi uh, from uh, Duke. So uh, I also play a significant role in the second one. Uh, the number three and number four are from my team. So <laughs> uh, the number three, actually, uh, we got review. Um, we got um, not fundable score, but we did get a score. So we are going to uh, revise and resubmit in the March, uh, March cycle. So uh, the number four, uh, this the R21 proposal, I uh, wrote that with my postdoc. So uh, the idea is to train him how to write a, a, a proposal so that uh, uh, will help uh, his uh, future career. Now, uh, I guess you might be wondering where, where's the magic here, right? So uh, now let me give you a couple example. So depend on how much you want us to write and how much in uh, you want us to involve. So uh, in this example, uh, actually our involvement is not much. So basically uh, you have a couple aim here and then uh, we uh, did the power analysis and we uh, input in this analysis method. So in this particular case, uh, we did the power analysis and uh, uh, some um, a statistical method uh, like ANOVA uh, with uh, multiple comparison uh, adjustment. So this is a very simple uh, case. Now, second uh, aim is similar. So, uh, so we, we can provide you a write-up like this. You can uh, copy and paste um, your grant proposal. And of course, you know, if there are any uh, adjustment, that we, we can go back and forth on this. Uh, we can discuss and all that. So, uh, one thing I do want to share with you is that um, I also uh, serve as the uh, standing member uh, in the uh, uh, NIH study section. Um, my experience is that, I think of my last four year experience is that, um, so a lot of the grants are beautifully written. Uh, they can uh, score pretty well in significance and innovation. Uh, also investigator, usually they are very capable. But uh, <laughs> um, whenever you get to the approach section, <laughs> that is the make it or break it section. So uh, many um, grant proposal uh, did not get a very good score uh, in the in the approach section. So I would say uh, there are uh, many reasons for that. Uh, some uh, major reason are first of all lack of statistics. So uh, second is that um, statistical design may not be uh, well enough. And third is that the method they, uh, they adopt may not be the most appropriate method uh, to analyze their data. And number four is that um, I would say uh, lack of sample size or lack of statistical power. So uh, I, <laughs> I don't want you guys to, uh, to get a, a thing on this uh, uh, point, but uh, so to avoid that, so uh, I would say it's always a good idea to have uh, some statistician look at your grant proposal before you submit. Uh, I think this is critically important. Um, otherwise, um, the method part may not be uh, that statistically sound or reasonable. So uh, that's, the, that's what I want to emphasize. Now, uh, this is a simple example. And uh, Another example is like this. <laughs> Sorry for all this uh, uh, math and uh, also the technical detail. So this one is the one I really involve. I I think I have like about 20% on this grant proposal. So this is uh, particularly the aim related to my part. So I put in all this technical detail uh, because this is more uh, methodological related grant. Um, so it could be something like this. Um, now, there are many ways you can involve uh, our team. Uh, uh, for example, you know, if you just want to uh, get some consultation, you can certainly do that. You need to involve uh, our effort. Uh, on the other hand, you could um, involve our effort, something like uh, 5% or 10%, something uh, small. 
so that we can help you along the way in your uh, uh, in your funding proposal. So, but for the proposal phase, you don't have to uh, don't have to pay because this part is already covered by NIH grant. Uh, so, um, and also like uh, if you want to have some uh, significant methodological piece like this one, uh, we could have uh, maybe a larger percentage of efforts such as uh, 15 to 20 percent. So depend on how much uh, we involve. So, so that's the, uh, this one. Um, and uh, so how do you request and how do you um, uh, reach us? So the best way is to uh, get to our website. So here there is a, a link uh, in uh, uh, investigator resource. Uh, you click click on that. Um, or this I think this link is on other uh, on the uh, homepage. So if you click on this the uh, Duke UNC ADIC resource request, you can fill out the questionnaire. So um, and put in some details about what you want to uh, request. So that uh, request will get routed to us. Um, so that's how you uh, get started. Now, uh, also, uh, I want to bring to your attention that uh, we have uh, uh, another page uh, detailing all this uh, data resource. So, for example, this uh, this uh, study is is the UNC Memory and Aging Study uh, in Young Cohort. So uh, here, um, the right hand side show you uh, sample size and uh, some basic uh, breakdown. Uh, information in uh, variables, some variables. So if you are interested in those study, you can also request. Um, and also, um, uh, I want to bring your attention to this arena um, web page. So that uh, this one uh, show show you the uh, you can explore the data uh, data set available. So you can, for example, here you can explore this uh, uh, memory and aging study, uh, and then you can see. Uh, what kind of data it has, the whether it fit your uh, research need. Okay. Uh, again, if uh, this is of interest to you, you can request the data. And then uh, this is our uh, email information. Uh, you can also find this on our web page. Uh, I want to stop here and uh, uh, please ask questions. Shang, uh, I was wondering if you could <clears throat> maybe just give some context for them about, you know, <laughs> the, the difference between what you're able to help with um, effectively um, in terms of how early the people come to you, right? right. About, like, this yeah. is always sort of the issue of like, oh, well, this grant, you know, we have to route it in a week, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and I, obviously just to sort of underscore the whole earlier, the better um, aspect. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, I can tell you my worst nightmare is that someone emailed me at about 5 p.m. in the afternoon and then tell me, hey, uh, can you do me a quick sample size calculation? It's due tomorrow. Well, <laughs> I, I I got this kind of email quite often, honestly. Um, well, I in this case, usually I would do my best to help, but I can tell you, um, uh, usually the uh, sample size calculation is not that quick because um, there might be a lot of uh, back and forth involved here um, in order for, for us to do a good job. So um, I would say, uh, again, you know, the earlier the better. Um, uh, I would say if you can involve us in the design phase, that would be ideal. Um, please do not wait until the last minute uh, because we... <laughs> Depends. Uh, but whenever uh, we get close to the uh, deadline, usually in February, uh, June, and uh, October, uh, we get pretty busy. So uh, please do not wait until the last minute. So if you give us at least like a two, three weeks, that would be great. Yeah. And then we had a comment in the chat, uh, oh, a question in the chat. Um, if we can just you know, obviously, again, this is sort of, I think, well, I mean, maybe you can tell us sort of how this is depending on bandwidth and availability and, you know, how AD RD focused where we are here. Um, I, I know that we haven't always necessarily worked out all the, the details to this, but yeah. Right. So um, I will say um, 
usually this is at no cost. So um, well, let me say it this way. So if the your, your grant is already funded, right? So um, it, it depends. So if you just want to have some uh, quick consultation, usually that is no cost, right? If it involve um, some more detailed analysis, uh, you may uh, use the existing grant to budget some uh, some effort. Um, usually for the uh, grant proposal phase, uh, is no cost uh, because the grant is not funded yet, right? Uh, for the ongoing project or paper, so uh, it also depends on whether that's funded or not funded, right? So, I mean, if it's funded, of uh, it also depends on, again, how much involve, involvement you have, right? So uh, if it involves a lot, so um, it's better to uh, cover some uh, percentage of the effort of the of the team. Uh, if it's not funded, so uh, which is also fine, you know, uh, usually we can uh, help you uh, uh, with some analysis, but uh, uh, in that case, we may not be able to do all the analysis and in, in great detail for you. Most of the time, I think we can, uh, can kind of provide uh, expertise about what to do, not exactly do it for you. So uh, I don't know if that kind of answered the question. Is it uh, like the the right uh, uh, bound here, uh, Heather? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Kind of, you know, I guess from the administrative core point of view is like kind of the way that, that we look at this is this is a service of the center. We're happy. I mean, I, th I think the consultation is is a rich thing and something that, that benefits everyone. I think what's generally reasonable to expect is that like an hour or two will be freely given mm -hmm. an hour or two to sort of talk about your design, to talk about your study, yeah. to plan things out, to start, get you started with, with some things. Um, if it becomes more than an hour or two, um, and even if, even if it is an hour, I mean, if 30 people at the same time are asking for an hour or two, um, you know, no one's ever expected to spend their entire Saturday and Sunday giving free hours <laughs> to, to um, consultation. But but generally that doesn't happen in an hour or two. You can you can get I think if the meter starts going over an hour or two, then you need to kind of be thinking to yourself like, OK, this is probably where I need to go to my mentor and say we need to think about if there's we can get some effort for someone. Now, if it happens to be a month where things are kind of quiet and Shane feels like under his time as the CMS core statistician, he still has some hours covered by the center, and then then you just got lucky that month. Um, yeah. Does that help? Kind of put some like yeah, 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 yeah. You know, the, the way I see this is more like uh, this is the C money, right? So <laughs> to help um, everybody who yeah. need this. So without really getting too involved into each individual project, uh, but for the proposal, you know, we usually do our best to help you get funded. So, yeah, yeah, right. And with the proposals generally, right, I mean, you know, there may be more than an hour or two of work on the front oh, end. And the expectation, sure. of course, is that, you know, there's 5% or 10% or whatever written into the grant budget, right, for, yeah. for the statistician to um, have support. Uh, should the grant be funded, right? And so that's just sort of, you know, the thing about you, you can't build to a grant that doesn't exist yet. And um, yep. you want to maximize the chances that that grant will get funded. So, yeah. Any uh, question from the audience, early stage investigator, researcher? Well, I can say uh, so far I haven't got any uh, request from uh, university other than Duke and UNC. So I'm looking forward to it. Yes. Uh, so um, we have some right. sort of like prioritization ish, right, around the Rec Scholars getting some help. Um, although I don't know that any of them have actually used it yet. Um, Shang? Not, um, I think one or two. Mm -hmm. Not not a lot. So uh yeah, you're welcome. If you're a rest scholar, you're welcome to uh contact either uh Mike or myself. So um yeah, so we are happy to help. 